Commerce Alive Today presents Service Merchandise Service Merchandise's history can be traced back to 1934 to a small five and dime store founded by Harry and Mary Zimmerman in the town of Pulaski, Tennessee. After leaving the wholesale business they would open Service Merchandise Incorporated the first of what evolved into a chain of catalog showrooms opened in 1960 at 309 Broadway in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. During the 1970s and 1980s Service Merchandise was a leading catalog showroom retailer. At its peak the company achieved more than $4 billion in annual sales. As the company expanded it began to open showrooms nationwide, mostly in the vicinity of major shopping malls which were in vogue in the 1970s. In the early 1980s the Service Merchandise headquarters moved from Nashville to nearby Brentwood, Tennessee becoming one of the first businesses to plant itself in the area that is now known as Cool Springs. In in May 1985 Service Merchandise acquired the H.J. Wilson Company for approximately $200 million. Raymond Zimmerman the CEO was attracted to Wilson's stores to gain a stronger foothold in the Sunbelt states. Several of these Wilson's locations included an off-priced apparel department of about 15,000 square feet. Service Merchandise also had other wholly owned subsidiaries featuring retail stores such as Zim's Jewelers Homeowners Warehouse the Lingerie Store and the Toy Store. Service Merchandise was a prominent sponsor of Wheel of Fortune. The retailer also provided some of the prizes on the Price is Right shop till you drop on the Family Channel and Shopping Spree. The company lost market share in its housewares and electronics sectors to giant discounters such as Walmart and Bed Bath and & Beyond and later Best Buy and Circuit City. Although service merchandise was early to embrace the internet in the 1990s generating tens of millions of dollars in sales, it was not enough to offset the damage done by the mega chain stores springing up nationwide. Until its closure however service merchandise enjoyed a strong jewelry department, continuing as the largest watch retailer in the United States. Gary M. Whitkin was appointed to the new position of President and Chief Operating Officer in 1994. The company responded to the market pressures with a series of restructuring plans that included the discontinuation of unprofitable product lines such as electronics, toys, and sporting goods and refocusing on fine jewelry gifts and home decor products. Many of their showrooms were also closed or downsized significantly. During this time the company was successful in subdividing a number of its company-owned stores into two or three units and subleasing the newly created spaces to other national chains thus reducing costs and at the same time generating more mall and store traffic. While in the process of changing its retail format a group of creditors forced an involuntary petition for bankruptcy under Chapter 11 on March 15, 1999 seeking court supervision of the company's restructuring, the company later filed a voluntary Chapter 11 petition to improve relations with its vendors and creditors in an effort to stabilize its business. Raymond Zimmerman son of the original founders resigned as chairman of the board in November 2000. The company subsequently attempted to pull itself out of bankruptcy once again in summer 2000 but the economic downturn following the September 11th attacks proved to be a hurdle the company could not clear. With only 200 catalog showrooms left the stock valued at less than one cent per share and no profitability in sight, service merchandise ceased operations and shuttered all of its remaining stores by early 2002. Service merchandise was well known for its unusual ordering process which emphasized the catalog even within the showrooms. Although other chains such as Brendel's Best Products Sterling Jewelry and Distributing Company and McDade's used this model they too eventually suffered the same fate. None was as successful as service merchandise. 
The reason behind offering the catalog showroom approach to retailing was that it reduced the risk of merchandise shrinkage and also enabled customers to shop without the inconvenience of physically dragging purchases throughout the store. The downside to this approach was that it required the customers to give their names, addresses and phone numbers with each order. The risk of identity theft made some customers wary of shopping in such stores particularly when purchasing simple household items such as batteries. For non-jewelry orders customers would enter the showroom and receive a carbon paper order form and clipboard to record the catalog numbers of desired items. Items were displayed in working order in the showroom allowing customers to test products as they shop. Current service merchandise catalogs were placed on stands in strategic locations throughout the store to allow customers to shop for items not on display. When ready to place their orders customers would take the order form to a clerk who would submit the order to the store's stockroom via his computer terminal cash register as well as take payment for the items. The customer would then move to the merchandise pickup area near the exit, where the order would emerge from the stockroom on a conveyor belt. This process was altered in the late 1980s to allow customers to place their own orders on a number of self-service computer kiosks named Silent Sam which the company later renamed Service Express. In addition to jewelry and catalog showroom display item service merchandise also had several self-service items which were located on shelves and taken by the customer to check out as in a traditional retail store. These items included many children's toys as well as smaller consumer or commodity items such as batteries film and video cassettes. The jewelry department which was featured prominently in the center of every showroom operated on a first-come first-served system in which each customer would be individually served by a jewelry clerk. Also in the mid-1980s service merchandise experimented with the installation of drive through windows at two showrooms, near Chicago and Nashville, allowing customers with phone-in orders to pick up their orders without leaving their automobiles. The concept was not expanded beyond its test stores but remained in place at those locations. In the mid-1990s the hand-filled paper forms were replaced with barcode pull tags placed on or near each item in the showroom. Customers gathered these for products they wished to buy and took these to the cashier to complete the sale in the previous manner, retrieved from the stockroom. By the late 1990s many of the showrooms had been converted to allow a more traditional approach to shopping in addition to the catalog ordering process. By 2000 all of the remaining showrooms had been downsized and the catalog style shopping approach was officially abandoned. You know, when something feels right, you go with it. It's something to believe in. That's how I feel about you. Well, I feel this way. Better than it's never been before. I know it's you. The feeling says love. Create it with fine jewelry from Service Merchandise, America's leading jeweler. If you have any fond memories, please indicate it at the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like.